Greetings from town. We're at Chuck's house. This is the fourth year we filmed this tree. And what happened is the main apple tree that was here fell over and some suckers grew back. The first year we selected the best looking sucker and we grafted on five different varieties of apples, one for each main branch. The year after that, we added a sixth, which is Bite Me, my seedling. So right now it is Pink Parfait, King David, Wixen, Bite Me, Lady Williams, and Gold Rush. Today we're gonna go through and prune this and do a little bit more training and try to like kind of finalize the main form of the tree, which should be done pretty much this year. First though, I brought some of the apples that are actually growing on this tree. As you can see, there's a, a couple of these too, so we'll taste this as well. And we're just gonna do a quick tasting uh, before we get started. There's just, there's all kinds of stuff on here. It's probably car exhaust. <laughs> so this is Lady Williams, and uh, it's usually ripe right around now, late January, early February. In town here, it might be a little bit early, so it could have been ready like a couple weeks ago. Not bad. Right by me. Yeah. Straight off the tree. It has some uh, classic apple flavor, almost like apple candy with some other fruit mixed in. You get that? You know what I mean? It's got like a candy-like quality. <laughs> the kind you were dipped in. Yeah, like fake apple taste. <laughs> so this is pink parfait that was just picked off our trees. It's very crispy still. Pretty. Way softer texture. Yeah, it's still crispy and kind of crunchy, but it's like, uh, it's real juicy and the pulp just kind of disappears. Nice flavor. Yeah. That's this one here. I didn't know how to spell parfait. <laughs> that's why it just says part. Oh, that's you that wrote it. Yeah, I added an S so it says pink parts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better name than pink parfait. So this is a gold rush, but I have two samples. One that was stored outside of the fridge, picked at the same time, probably October. And this is stored in the fridge in a plastic bag. It ripens real slow, so this might actually be better in a month. Very firm texture. Yeah, it's very firm. Yeah, this thing keeps like a rock. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of them have still been too acidic, but this one's pretty sweet. Good. Nice. So this you have to pick. That guy's like, what? Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So this one you have to pick in like October or something and bag it. Because it, it doesn't actually hang on the tree well. Like you actually have to get the timing down. I've tried. i tried for years to hang it on the tree. Okay, so this is the one that was just outside. And the interesting thing is the texture because this is wrinkled like, well, th you're 85, this is way more wrinkled than you. So this is like, this is like a hundred year old wrinkled. Real sweet. Hmm. It's almost syrupy because a lot of the water is left. Where most apples will turn mealy, this has turned rubbery. It's Ooh. like rubber. Yeah, kind of like a little bit rubbery. It's kind of soft, but when you bite it, it breaks into other big soft pieces and it's just like rubber in your mouth. It's really weird. And you can yeah. squish it like this and it still won't go bad. Like it doesn't really bruise the same. And the flavor's still there. Yeah, it it's actually has more flavor than the other one. Really. So that's pretty cool. And this is just a matter of humidity. That's why it wrinkles. Uh, so if, if you stored it in a damp, like outdoor shed or something like that. It might be better. This is a seedling I just want to taste real quick. I was actually going to call this and then I let it hang longer and tasted it again. Hmm. I'd use that in my oatmeal. Yeah. Not as flavorful. Probably withstand cooking better than a Fuji would. No. Yeah. Or more like cooking cider. So there are three other videos you can go back and look at. 
to get the whole history of this tree. Today we're going to do some pruning, finalize some of the training, talk about the progress that's been made. Uh, the, the tree's really just starting to come into heavy bearing. I think this next year, like I could see, there's fruit buds here, fruit bud, fruit bud, fruit bud, fruit bud, fruit bud, and there's one on the end of this. That's covered in them. Uh, there's a bunch along that branch. I mean, I think most of the varieties will fruit probably this year unless we have a really bad uh, bloom season. This branch is actually the original sucker, and we don't know what it is. It's probably a rootstock that the original tree was grafted to. The original tree was some kind of early uh, yellow apple, but Chuck wants to see what the fruit will turn out like. So we're gonna leave that, and maybe, I think what i do with this is just take a string and tie it to the trunk, and that might encourage it to fruit sooner. Right. It's not gonna fruit this year, but these guys might turn into fruit buds uh, this year, if you do right. that. Okay, so last year we tied this up because this was bent way down, just sagging to the ground like that. And we just wanted to tie it up for one year and kind of get it set back into a new spot. Because when all these fruit buds fruit this year, it would drag it even further and it'd be literally like touching the ground. So if this gets really bad this year, you should uh, prop it or tie it if the fruit starts to pull it down. But in the meantime, we should untie it. Yeah. So anything else besides this one sucker that he wants to keep? There's one growing off the trunk here that's the original rootstock. Cut those off. Now that it's untied, it basically didn't even move. Uh, and it's almost too tall now. It's pretty close to this. But it's, again, as soon as this fruits, it's going to drop again. So that's actually good. Let's start with uh, the bottom and we'll work our way up. So this I want to take out. I left it because um, I was hoping it would kind of be able to tame it a little bit and turn into like a little bit of fruiting wood but since it's on the top of the branch and it's right at the base you can see how big it is it's just drawing a lot of energy off and this grew I mean this is three or more feet long right here so if I don't I can tell now this is so vigorous that if I don't cut it out completely it's going to do this every single year and yeah it'll produce some fruit but we really don't need it and it's kind of annoying so I'm going to cut that off close to the collar right here. Also, it was providing a little bit of shade, but now we have more shade from the trees, so that shouldn't be so much of a problem. Shade to prevent sunburn. So elsewhere out here, we're basically going for a structure where this is the main branch here, not this one. And every once in a while, we want a, a side branch coming off like this that will grow out a few more little things and end up producing all the fruit wood. So think of it as, this is like the structural wood of the tree, this long thing, and it's gonna have fruit for a while, like there's fruit buds all along here, but eventually those are gonna die, and then this is what's gonna be producing all the fruit. So we wanna set it up so there's a few of these that are nice and strong. So a pretty good spacing for these, I found about a foot apart on staggered from one side to the other. I want to take a lot of the smaller growth off that we don't need so it channels more energy into these guys here. So this one I'm going to shorten to this which might produce fruit. This I'm going to leave because it's short and doesn't want to grow that much. I'm going to take this off because it's on the top. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to shorten this to just a couple of fruit buds. And then I'm going to pick one bud out here, this one right here, no, this one here, and I'm going to cut a notch through the bark and slightly into the wood, about one third or a half of the way around the tree, or the, whatever, <laughs> the shoot. Above or below? Above the bud. And that's going to hopefully force this shoot to grow outward. And that'll become another one of those branches. I prefer this one was growing on this side here. I'm actually going to take that out. So hopefully now a lot of that growth energy will be guided into these and they'll get bigger and stouter and instead of having a bunch of wispy things like on this one, we'll look at that in a minute. Now I originally let this back branch grow just to get more fruit wood earlier and it's really, it's not that bad. The placement's pretty good. It's growing a little bit more than I want. It's only about a third smaller than this branch. I would prefer it was smaller. So I'm gonna take off the top growth. There's some kind of disease growing there. I'm gonna shorten that and do it to like a downward facing bud to encourage this to kind of grow out and down instead of up. Just kind of shorten this stuff up. Take off anything that's growing on the top. We'll see what that does this year. 
Actually, I'm going to shorten this to a fruit bud that's growing downward. I prefer this just kind of stayed like this and started making fruit. It's not going to, but that's what I want. This is kind of annoying. What do we do with that? I'm thinking of a weight or if you have some clothespins and anything else, like maybe a pipe fitting and a clothespin would kind of just pull this down and simulate a piece of heavy fruit. Oh. And that'll hold it like this until it kind of sets in place where we want it. Okay. Okay, so with this one, we did the same thing last year, picking just a few of these to be kind of the main scaffolds. Some of those were branches that I had notched the year before to make them grow out where I wanted them. Whatever, for whatever reason, this is King David, you can see the difference in growth habit between, say, like this one and this one. This is Wixen, and they're, they're kind of polar opposites. So this has like all these, these shoots, and it kind of wants to grow a bunch of small shoots, and this one doesn't want to grow any shoots. In fact, the only reason this is here and the, this one over here, the side shoot, which is great, these are perfect, is because I notched those to make them grow there. If I hadn't, this would probably just be a bare stem, uh, which is kind of annoying. As it is, since I did that, it's great because I have these two nice uh, side scaffold things and it's studded with fruit wood all along here. So eventually these are gonna grow out and diversify and fill in this space over in here. There's another one here. And then the fruit will be produced more on those than on the main stem. But with King David, if I just let it grow, it's just gonna grow tons of this small wood and not put energy into these and not grow those out into fans. So I think we're gonna leave this one, this one. Unfortunately, the tree cracked here. Uh, maybe someone pulled down on it or something. And I think this doesn't look too good, so I'm gonna take this one out and let that heal up. But then I just wanna thin some of this stuff out. I don't want just tons and tons of shoots on here. I like this one out here, get rid of that one, get rid of that one. We'll just leave one extra for now. Also, this is the main path. We only want this to grow so far out, so we're gonna just tip that back. It'll kind of grow out and just do that every year and it'll gain, you know, three or four inches a year. Anything on the top goes, no need for that. Now, some of that stuff I cut off would produce fruit in the next few years, but it would be at the expense of setting up all this other wood the way I want it. So this is gonna bend down like that when it fruits, probably this year. I take off the one that's on the top, shorten, and shorten that. I kind of want this to be here, but I want it to be like that. I think that one too, we could probably wait, wait down. Yeah, we could tie it too. If I just limber it up enough here, I think we can get it to do what we want. If it breaks, I'll just let this other one go. You want to tie it now? Yeah, I mean, oops. Yeah, mess that up. All right, I think I'm just going to let this grow instead. I take that off. I think I'm going to take it off. It's just poorly placed. Okay, and then it has this other major offshoot here. Same thing. I'm going to take some of this stuff off the top because it's always going to want to grow more. The stuff on the top gets more resources and everything else. Um, I'm going to shorten this one back. Let that grow that way. Take that off the top. Let this one grow this way. Leave this for good measure. Leave that. Take that off the bottom. Simplified. Okay, so this one, I'm going to not this because Wixen just doesn't want to grow side branches. It tends to grow these long, lanky shoots with no break, side breaks. So this just does, doesn't do the same thing this year and just keep growing out. I'm going to notch a couple of these buds to get it to kind of send off some sides here. Wow, it's loud here. Got jackhammers, crazy people, traffic. I did a pretty sloppy job there, but hopefully those will out some side shoots. This is looking fine, but if I, 
I want I want one more side shoot out here for sure. So we got like about a foot here, and then if I go out here, about another foot or maybe a little bit more, even 18 inches. That's the bud right there. I really want this to grow out. So while the King David basically naturally just grew a lot of options to choose from, this one you really have to kind of make it do that if you want that, you know, if you want something specific out of it. Uh, this one, take the stuff off the top, leave this, leave that, shorten it. That off the bottom. I think I'll skip talking about that because you can't see it except for right here, we have the same problem with this thing on top that just wants to keep growing up and up and up. So we're just gonna annihilate that. Feels like spring today. It's kind of muggy and warm. It is. Weird. Yeah. I mean, it's not unusual to have sun in January, but it's usually not muggy. Okay, so this is Bite Me, and I don't know why, but I let two major shoots grow last year. I really should have uh, trimmed this down to one and done some training on it, but I'm going to choose one of those. That's the better one. Okay, so this is a vigorous variety, but it's not growing vigorously. It only put on, you know, 10 inches on there last year. And it looks like part of the problem is that this is kind of sick, like where the graft was got some infection in there, it's all black. Also, when you graft something late like that, you know, these other branches are already pulling so much resources away that this just probably isn't getting as much. I'm going to do the same thing we did with those buds, and I'm going to notch above this branch so that the first couple of months of spring, this is going to get more of the stuff coming up here and hopefully get more of a, the hormones that are going to cause this to grow more. So hopefully that'll help. And then by early summer, this will be completely healed back up. So I'm going to cut a, like, maybe a quarter inch wide notch about one third of the way around and I want to make sure I get into the wood a little bit or at least scrape the wood so the nutrients can't travel up the where the bark used to be up the cambium layer okay so hopefully that'll help it grow a little bit but I'm gonna notch a few things here to give us some options hopefully some of them will grow and then it can be sorted out later Let's do one there, and then say the next one's going to be out right here. There's not much else I could think of to do to make this grow. If this heals up a little bit more and this gets a, this graft becomes more robust, it, that'll help. Uh, here's another upright shoot. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. It's not, it was shading the branch. Now it's serving no purpose, really. Okay, this is Gold Rush up here. You can see there's one fruit trying to hang on there. And I'm gonna take out some of this, just kind of take out a little bit of this smaller stuff. Simplify first, thin it out a little bit. And at the top of the tree, this is a system called the usually modified central leader. So it comes up and there's branches pointing in different directions so they don't overlap each other too much. And then at the top, you cut it off and it kind of grows maybe two or three different main things. So I have one, two, and then this would be three. And those kind of each take a little bit of resource. And then these are drawing a lot of resource. So it keeps the top of the tree from just shooting straight up. And it kind of keeps it down a little bit so it's easy to control. As you can see, it still grew quite a bit. This is probably two feet long. So it's not like it just completely controls it, but it's easy to maintain it. So I'm gonna cut this to a bud that's facing roughly in that direction. That one goes this way. This one I wanna to cut to a bud facing in this direction, right there, and so on. And then this one I don't really want growing out up into here, so I'm gonna cut it to this fruit spur. There's a fruit spur right there. Same with this, cut it to the fruit spur. Shorten that to an outward facing bud. Get rid of that straight up and down piece, looking good. When you do this, if you can't see the bud, or even if you can, it's good to cut right above the, above the bud so you can set your clippers on the stem and then slide it down until you feel the bottom here hit 
the bud and then clip it. Shorten this one to a fruiting spur. Looking good. That's what we want. So these are Lady Williams, which is, you know, it's normal for them to be hanging on the tree, but they got some kind of disease, and I don't know what it is, but it, it kills the leaves, and then the apples become small and deformed. And uh, this tree had that on two different branches, but the Lady Williams had it the worst. Okay, so it took about four years to get most of the framework of this tree in place. With a little bit more diligence, it could even go a little bit faster. Most of the stuff is in place. And again, you know, these shoots are gonna grow out and they're gonna do kind of the same thing we did with these. Diversify a little bit, they'll form more fruiting spurs. But as the tree grows more shoots, it'll tend to grow fewer long shoots and produce more fruit wood and more fruit and less growth and it'll be really easy to kind of maintain in this basic form by just mostly shortening the shoots every year. And that's a major system of pruning that a lot of people use. There's no proper way to prune an apple tree. There's just endless variations. Uh, some varieties require different things than other varieties, but a pretty common system is to get the form established, get a bunch of fruiting wood, like all these spurs and stuff, and then kind of just shorten the long growth and take some of it out and shorten what's left every year and it just kind of keeps the tree as this sort of compact thing in the same form uh, for decades. So that's it for this year and we may not even visit this again ever. I think after this year it's kind of becoming pointless to um, talk about it much more like you get the idea of how it's trained and everything I hope. This is a fun project. All right. And Chuck wants to do the same thing with this tree, maybe even taking the same varieties off there because we had some uh, sunburn damage down here and about maybe a quarter of the trunk is uh, the bark's gone and there's a big dead spot there. It'll probably heal up, but eventually that's gonna rot and break off. And we had to cut off some pretty big branches. So like right down here, you, you can't see it, but there's about a two inch branch we had to cut off and that's not healing over very well. So Chuck wants to do this tree as well and uh, do the same thing with that. So we'll do the same thing. There's a bunch of shoots on here. This year, we're gonna take off anything that's not gonna be one of these main scaffold branches and then notch a few of these buds to encourage them to grow more side shoots where we want them. And then by the end of next year, this could have all five new varieties grafted onto it. And from there on, it's, you know, it's all the, the stuff he's gonna want. Very good. Thank you. This one and this one. And the others. Yeah, that one and the other upright one.